And to get us some perspective, we are now being joined by Elizabeth Loris. She is the president of E. Loris Consulting and a professor at University of Mary Washington. Ms. Loris, good to see you again. How are you? Very good. Thank, thank you for having me on again. Absolutely. The pleasure is ours. Let me come to you with the numbers we have right now. Uh, these numbers are coming from the YouGov poll, and we are tracking three swing states this time, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and North Carolina. Let me quickly just tell you what the numbers suggest. In Pennsylvania, Donald Trump is at 47. Harris is at a close 48. In Michigan, uh, the margin is a little more. Harris is at 49, and Trump is at 45. And North Carolina, it's actually a little bit of a flip. Trump is ahead with 47, and Harris is 45. Four days to go for elections. What are you making of these numbers? Anyone can see, of course, that the race remains extremely tight. Whoever is going to win, it's going to win it probably by a nose. It will not only come down to those states and the um, other of the seven battleground states, but more likely counties, counties within the states. Um, some counties are, are very blue, others are very red. Turnout, early voting turnout has been phenomenal. It is shattering records in a lot of the counties that really can decide the vote in these states. So you almost need to have like a microscope to look at these battleground states and determine where are the pockets where the Republicans or the Democrats still need to get out those low propensity voters. There still is work to be done. Um, in most states, early voting ends today. Virginia here, uh, people have until tomorrow. And so the parties still can pick up uh, those low propensity votes by getting out there and going door to door. Uh, right. Ms. Loris, in our news cycle of the last 24 hours, it seems like Donald Trump has taken most of the headlines. Uh, this one is coming from New Mexico. He said there, and I'm quoting, he was talking to his supporters and the voters there, and he said, and I'm quoting, your votes are rigged. I believe we won it twice in New Mexico. Now, I pulled some data from the election body in the United States. 2016, Hillary Clinton, 2020, Joe Biden. Both of them won New Mexico against Donald Trump. Now, because of statements like this, there is a growing fear that Donald Trump might not concede and accept the defeat uh, in case he's handed, uh, Kamala Harris is handed a win. Do you think that is a possibility? Well, that is certainly his fear. And so like the mantra amongst the Trump team and Republicans has been, you know, like too, too big to lose, too big to cheat. I'm, I'm obviously paraphrasing there. And that, um, that's why they're really encouraging like every Republican of voting age to come out because if they have overwhelming numbers, then it's going to um, the, the the cheating that they say you know will be going on just just won't be effective. But you mentioned the optics. Um, yet yeah, Donald Trump is the master of the optics, and sometimes sometimes the Democrats can hand it to him. For example, putting on that apron, you know, and, and working at McDonald's, you know, that apron over his white French cuff cuffling shirt, um, his his riding around in a, a, a dump truck, um, a garbage truck. Um, the Democrats have handed him a lot of optics. Maybe they should just stick to their own message and stop criticizing and, and giving him these opportunities that he and his staff are very good at turning to his advantage. Right, and I think many of the women voters in U.S. will actually agree to your assessment because that's one demographic we are closely tracking and something my writer is calling them paradoxical voters. While they support abortion rights, they're also willing to go ahead and vote for Donald Trump. What do you make of that? I think that a lot of women, well, first of all, a lot of women are not single issue voters, particularly Republican women. I would say for Democrat women, abortion is probably number one on their list, and they're going to come out and they're going to vote for Harris. Uh, Republican women uh, tend to have perhaps a, a broader uh, view of things going on in the country, you know, the economy, uh, the the threat to women's safety because of illegal immigration. 
And so they're looking at that whole package rather. And also since the Dobbs decision, abortion uh, rulings are, are really going to be left up to the states. That's where the action is. It's not the president determining that anymore. And so, as you mentioned, there are initiatives on ballots now at the state level. And that's where people are, will be voting regarding um, abortion or, or pro-life and, and not so much at the presidential level. Uh, right, Ms. Lawrence, I have so much more to unpack. Just one quick question before I have to let you go because we are running out of time. Uh, we are approaching the weekend and one would assume that this is when the voters are out and about uh, either in the public spaces or in front of their television sets or probably scrolling through their Instagram and TikTok. What is going to be the focus of the two candidates given this is the last weekend before the big day? Um, again, it's just getting out those low propensity uh, voters. Uh, Republicans will definitely, definitely be trying to get people to come to the polls. Republicans are less likely to vote early. Interestingly enough, Trump is going to be in Virginia tomorrow. That is not a swing state. And yes. so they might be looking at internal polls and putting their effort where their internal polls say they could actually make a difference. All right, Ms. Lawrence, thank you so much for speaking with us here on Beyond. Good to speak to you. I look forward to speaking to you again. You're welcome. For all the latest news, download the Beyond app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.